Well, Hummingbird Day goes off the deep end every week here at the CCA Workbench, Dave. Yes, sir. And pier fishing is something that you've done quite a well, bit. Well, I did it for a long time before I got a boat. I didn't, you know, I got a boat late in life, so I spent a lot of time rock hopping, with me, especially with my brother. That's how we did a lot of our fishing. So what do we need to know? Well, there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of things. One thing, if you're going to be fishing on a pier or a dock, you want to get there early, and you want to get a good spot. I mean, that's very important, you know. Uh, oh, you mean there's... Pure etiquette? A little bit, yeah. You want to get out because you don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to come walking in there after a guy's already got a spot and move him out of the way. And it's a good idea if you have two guys to get the same spot, one on each side of the pier. That way, because you never know. One side you're going to be casting into the wind, but that might still be the good side. So if you have one guy stationed on each side of the pier at the beginning of the day, you can figure out which side's the best side, and then you can move over. I but it's it. always a good idea to have one guy on each side. Um, all. Nowadays, I wish we had, had these, I didn't even think about it back in the day, we always just carried our stuff in our hands. A backpack a is backpack. a big thing to have because you're very mobile, you can put a lot of stuff in it, you Oof. know, with, with a, a lot of waterproof boxes and stuff. This is already loaded. Got yeah. your sunscreen here. Yeah, yeah. But if you, Leader. If it, what it does is it frees your hands <laughs> up to carry your rods and your reels and your nets and everything else and it also allows you to be a little bit more balanced. If you don't have a lot of heavy stuff and you're going hopping through the rocks, in, in your, you got heavy stuff in your hands. You can, you can hurt yourself. You know, just like uh, Patty said, um, heavier baits and lures. Uh, this in here is one of my favorite baits of all time for fishing on a jetty or a pier or anywhere else. Is a gotcha. And, gotcha. They come, and they come in all different sizes and colors and shapes. As you can see, I've just got about every one in here that you can get. There's a couple knockoffs. You got um, short ones and long ones. Yeah, and they cast like color a, ones. They cast like a bullet, and and they catch everything. Which is, you know, the heavier baits make for longer casts. And there's nothing more frustrating when the fish are just out of your reach. Right. And if you can have heavier stuff to get out there to them, you're going to be ahead of the game. Uh, wire leaders and stuff. When you're fishing on a jetty or a pier, you're probably going to be fishing around mackerels and bluefish and whatnot. So it's good to have some hard wire to, to tie up with to save your gear. You know, if you're going through five gotchas and you know at a time or five you know rapalas or whatever, they, that adds up and starts to be very expensive. And you want to you want to bring some wire with you. Yeah, you want to spend your time catching and not necessarily re-rigging. Yeah, re-tying and, and crying over all that stuff that you've lost. What else do we need? To uh, know, Dave? Sabiki rigs are very important if you're fishing Why off of is a that? pier because you might want to start using live baits. If you're watching the fish tear up a big pile of pilchards out there or cigar minnows, if you catch the bait where you're at, if you're right there on the pier, and you throw that bait into the pile of bait that you just caught it out of, pow, it's, you're gonna get a much better bite than bringing a bunch of bait and trying to keep it alive. You just catch your, have one rod that's just loaded with sabiki and he's your bait rod. And yeah. the pier attracts and the jetties attract. Correct. They have always have a lot of the bait around swim, it. swimming around it, it, and you can get down there and get them. Um, good shoes, and not, slit, not, not sandals or anything else. A good pair of shoe shoes, because when you're you know, hopping through those big chunks of granite mm -hmm. that they use for jetties and stuff, one slip, and you can crack a knee, break a leg, literally. I mean, I've seen some horrible accidents. Um, because the guys didn't have really good shoes on. And piers can be real splintery as well. Um, landing gear, you want to have a good bridge gaff. You know, if you're fishing right. for stuff that you want to keep, uh, you wouldn't want to put that in a tarpon or anything. But if you're catching big snook and you're on a bridge or on a pier or a cobia, a bridge gaff really comes in handy because that way I don't have Kingfish. to. Kingfish. Yeah, I don't have to jump in the water like that guy did, you know. Right. I, I, I can just reach down there and get them. They, they come, they, you can get a net too. And, and also, if you're fishing off the bridge, you can use a, just a long handled net because, or I mean a pier, because, or a jetty, because that little last bit is very treacherous around the rocks. Right. And if you've got a big snook on and he's real up close to the, to the rocks, that little bit of you reaching out there and getting him yep. comes along. It, make, it makes a big difference in landing a fish. Yeah. Uh, try to use bigger gear when you're on a pier or a jetty because you've got to have the stopping powder. You know, when you run out of pier, you can't run anymore. You know, you gotta you gotta be able to stop the fish, and if you're not in a boat and can't chase them down, you need to have 30 pound braid or above to stop a big dolphin or a kingfish or a big cobia, and uh, coming back. Speaking of running, you're, you're run out of time. I've run my mouth a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs>